So we're really happy to have Professor Julio Valladares with us today. Julio is from Peru. He's from the Universidad de Piura uh, in Peru. And right now he's working out of Lima. He holds his master's in TEFL and his bachelor's degree in education from Universidad de Piura. And he also holds a diploma in competencias directivas from the business school of Universidad de Piura, and also a diploma in critical thinking from the University of Oregon. He's been an English teacher and a teacher trainer for more than 30 years, and he's worked for Britannico, which is the Anglo-Peruvian Institute. Uh, he's worked for Richmond Publishing and also at Camelot as a teacher and a teacher trainer. He's um, delivered lectures in different places in Peru, as well as Bolivia, Mexico, China, and the United States. And he's currently working for Universidad de Piura, where he's responsible for the teacher development unit of the language school. And he's also the center manager for Cambridge exams. And here to speak with us today with the presentation, Motivation in COVID Times, please help me welcome Professor Julio Valladares with a warm virtual round of applause or show your thumbs up or wave your hands there <laughs> for him. So thank you very much, Julio. I'm gonna stop sharing and you can take it away. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Mark, for your presentation. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some ideas and also to learn from, from my partners, from my peers. Well, my name is Julio Valladares. I'm from Peru and um, I work for Universidad Pura. I, I, I would say I'm Universidad Pura, we say in Spanish, Universidad Pura Corazón. So, <laughs> so that's that's what we want. No? Um, the objective of this, of this talk is to get us to think and to reflect on, on a very important issue in, 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 in the teaching learning process of a second language, which is motivation and the things that have brought motivation to, to the spotlight in, in, in the sense of how can I motivate my students? Am I, or am I over motivating my students, if I may say so? Or uh, now that I'm, at least in Peru, we're going back to to face to face classes, no? And after two years, so am I going back to the way I motivated my students? What am I going to do now? Yes, they are used to to their tablets. They are used to using their their mobile phones. Am I going to allow them? I mean, not me, but the principal of the school, the minister of education are going to allow, at least in Peru, that's not possible. No? So they have to change and we have to change. And the idea of this, of this talk is to share and say, okay, what do you think? What do you think we, we can do? No? And also to, to reflect on, okay, I have uh, peers from Honduras, I have peers from Costa Rica, from Mexico, and, and, and say, okay, how different we are or how close we are in terms of dealing with motivation here, okay? So I'm going to start now. And we're going to start with some food for thought, you know? So without motivation, you know, even people, and we have students with very great abilities to learn a second language, but the problem is the long-term goals. You know? So without sufficient motivation, even individuals with most remarkable abilities cannot accomplish long-term goals. And that has to do also with the appropriate curriculum and good teaching enough to. So no matter how great a teacher you are, no, that would be difficult to ensure student achievement on their own. So there's something for us to think about, to, to say, okay, no motivation, no much learning. No motivation. Yeah, there might be learning, but in the long term, what's going to happen? Yes. So let's see. What ideas come to your mind after reading this? Any ideas? Mics? No. Somebody would like to participate here? Yeah, so we're going to try to do this session a little bit more interactive than we, we typically do. We normally have your mics muted, and we do want you to stay muted just to keep it from getting too chaotic. But at these different moments, Julia is going to let us open our, our mic. So anyone yes. would like to go, you can go ahead and share. Lynn. I, I saw, yeah, Lynn, go ahead. Lynn. Okay. Um, hi. Thanks for coming and doing this TED Talk, I mean, this uh, 
talk for us. Uh, question, uh, it's not a question, just an observation. Um, anytime you provide a service, it doesn't matter if you're teaching, doesn't matter if you're a psychologist or a doctor or if you're giving a service, um, you can be the best you can be. However, it's the other side, the other side, the student or the patient or whomever who purchases the service, uh, they have a desire. Um, they want to learn something. The problem is, is that, first of all, um, their motivations are completely different than what you would different. think. Okay, the motivations are completely different and they're doing it for different reasons. And if you're looking for people under 18, it's because probably they're being forced to go. Their parents are sending them. So there, there's motivation issue there too, okay? And there's an old saying, you, you shared an old saying in Spanish at the beginning of this talk, and I'll share one now. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink even if they're thirsty. <laughs> That's true, so, that's true. Uh, it's a two-way street. You know, the teacher has to meet halfway and the student has to meet halfway. And there's nothing you can do to change that. It's all yeah. our decision to motivate and be motivated is fine. That person, the student, has to make the decision. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you, Lynn. Yes, you mentioned yeah. two, two, two interesting words there. Desire mm -hmm. and learn. Desire mm -hmm. to learn. Mm -hmm. you know? And how can we as teachers manage to get them together and say desire to learn? Yes, because my desire to learn a second language is different from yours or from my peers. Uh, when we are under 18, we're in school. Sometimes we don't want to, to learn English because we don't like it and that's it. You know, sometimes say, but why don't you? Well, I don't like it. Yes, so mm -hmm. what can we do in order to try to reach, to open that, that um, Barrier that sometimes our students uh, build before us mm -hmm. in, in front of the class. And Lynn also mentioned something like yes, it's a two way process teaching, learning, and also students, teacher. So, motivation is not only on the part of the student, it's also on the part of the, of the teacher. You know? How often, I mean, I don't know what, what happened when we started with this teaching and uh, all the students, have, at least in Peru, we had, I mean, most of our students had, because of the interconnectivity problem, they had the cameras off. And you don't know, if you were talking to all of them, they were paying attention to you, were they? We didn't know. So to overcome that kind of situation, uh, in, at the beginning, I felt demotivated somehow because they, are they following me? Or when we were talking and say, okay, now Mark, and Mark, Silent, no? That's the famous ghost student, no? I said, Mark, Mark, are you there? So I, I, I lost like two precious minutes of my class. No? So think about this, yes. Definitely motivation and learning, they go hand in hand. Yes, not everybody is going to be motivated like, like this, no, no. But we had, our job is maybe to foster that kind of motivation. What are we gonna do now? Yes. So that's what I say, what is motivation here? And I, I ask myself that question as, as a student, no? Why are we here in front of my teacher of English? Why am I in this classroom? And then changes to why are we here in front of this screen with the teacher of English on the other end? Why am I in, in this classroom? Why? Why am I in here? Because my parents sent me, because the school, that's the, the way school works. Okay, it's true. Eh? We're dealing with the primary, secondary students, uh, even at university level. Yes, but why? So, ah, because yeah, I'm going to have a class of English and I'm going to learn, but yeah, to learn for what? A child, when you're teaching children, you're not going to tell them about globalization and, and the importance of, of English in the world of, 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 of work, of, or in the world of research. No. So you have to, to get them to fall in love with English, but in the long term. And for that, motivation is an important factor. Yeah. No. 
my question is, how do you motivate your students? If I ask you, how do you motivate your students? What comes to your minds now? Any ideas? Maybe you can write it on, on, the, on the chat or you would like to participate? Yeah, I, yeah hello. <laughs> yeah, I think really? motivating students is a big issue. Sometimes uh, we don't really know how to motivate it, but I, mm -hmm. uh, I think every activity, every session, whatever we do should be focused on students and understand what they really need and how to, be to develop activities or any kind of workshops that can keep them engaged into what we are trying to do. And first we need to understand them. What are their needs? How they learn it? What they really want to learn? And based on that, we can develop some activities to help to keep them engaged. Mm. Okay, that's good. So paying attention to this, our students' needs, paying attention to uh, um, the focus, I mean, focusing on our students, no? Engage, pero you mentioned also another important word, engagement, keep it in mind. Rene, you raise your hand. Yeah, sure. It's uh, similar to uh, what Pedro was talking about. I just wanted to add that Sometimes it does uh, begin with a little bit of investigation, uh, not only looking into needs, but also interests and goals of the student so that you can then find uh, easier points uh, to motivate and induce lasting engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay, interest and goals, right. In practical terms, how do you motivate your students? In practical terms, in your class, what do you do? If I ask you, if I ask you, okay, give me an example of, of an activity you think helps you motivate your students. What do you do? Ideas? Maybe role plays, uh, games, mm -hmm. um, also singing according to the topic that we are teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I think it's, uh, it's an example uh, on how we can engage and keep focus and motivate uh, students. Ah, okay, yeah. Before COVID-19 was songs, games, videos, you know, uh, some, as, as Pedro and Rene mentioned, you know, okay, what are the, the, the needs of the students? So maybe we prepare a reading related to that. Maybe we prepare a kind of, um, written activity or a presentation you know, in front of the class. But then comes comes to my, I mean, to my mind comes Kahoot, Padlet, Flipgrid, Meme Generator, that's COVID-19 way ideas that come to, to my mind when I say, okay, how do I motivate my students? No? Now here comes the word, okay, engagement. You may, some of you may be thinking, but Julio, that's an idea to engage, okay? That's it. But some students are motivated because they know they are going to do Kahoot every class and they like it no? because they make them, uh, maybe they are kind of competitive students and they, okay, I want to, to see how much I get or, or if I am the number one in a class when I answer these kind of questions. No? Now, when I say, mot that's why I say motivation, engagement and education. Yes. So one more question here. Is motivation the same as engagement? What do you think? Or can they be used interchangeably? What do you understand by motivation? Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. I think Good that um, uh, motivation is not the same, but it's related because uh, if you are motivated, then you can engage students for learning. Otherwise mm -hmm. that is not possible. Mm -hmm. And if I say, if you're engaged, you can motivate your students, does it work the same way? I think it will work better on the other way around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Somebody else would like to add something to this? Is it motivation the same as engagement? Okay, Lynn. 
Yeah, I just put it in the chat. I believe that engagement is an output of thought and action. It's an out. Okay. But motivation is an inner desire to engage. Exactly. Motivations exactly. inside engagement is what is expressed outside. All right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn. So we can say they're similar or they're the same. And to me, just they click naturally. Yes, obviously, motivation goes more as the inner drive. No, it's the inner drive to keep on learning. Engagement, maybe it's just this period of class, and that's it. And then whoosh, no more English. Yes, but motivation is okay. I've learned this. Now maybe next next class I can put that into practice. Next class I can I can read better, I can understand better. So that's the inner drive, no? And for example, Dinora said motivation and engagement are different. Yes, yes, first the student should be motivated then to engage, all right, yes. Motivation and engagement are different, yes, okay. Greetings, all right, so, yes. And they said, engagement has to do with what the learners experience during the activity, no? So it's more emotional. When you're dealing with a game, we're working and we're, okay, now we're going to play to the game. Okay, great, and they are engaged. No? So they are, yes, we have, oh, I can hood. Okay, who's going to be? They're engaged. It's easier. It's more on, on, on the spot kind of activity. Yes, but motivation takes longer. Motivation is from, as, as Lynn mentioned, and, from our heart, let's see. No, that's our inner drive, yes? Motivation is the reason the learners act. Is the reason, why? Why am I here? Why am I learning English? Why, okay. Motivation is the engine of learning, is the engine of learning. Motivation can influence what we learn, how we learn, and when we choose to learn. So, and that has to do with, hey, yeah, but um, in my case, for example, I, 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 don't, I don't find um, Kahoot, using Kahoot all the time attractive. That's, that's me. No, maybe I got engaged, but then after two or three times using it, ah, uh, it's the same thing. So students, they already know what to do. They already, okay. And some students don't like it. Needs of the students, paying attention to the needs of my students. So I have to change. Yes. So the students also need that kind of, uh, if they want to, to, to be motivated by their teachers, we teachers have to pay attention to the variety of activities to cater for all the different ways of learning. Why? Because, hey, that's not the way I learn. That's not how I want to learn. And maybe today I don't want to, I don't want to read. I want to write. I want to do some, some grammar exercises. So how can we manage in order to get our lesson, our classes, our activities on the same wavelength? for everybody here, yes. So motivation has a reciprocal relationship with learning, yes. Reciprocal relationship with learning. And motivation is one of the most critical components of learning. So why? Because it's influenced by your student's personality, abilities, the task itself, incentives for learning, the setting, and the teacher's behavior. Yes, and also if we are motivated, that's much better, but what happens if we are not? What happens if at the beginning, I don't know if you remember last year, the beginning of this new way of, of teaching and learning, no? I, I was like, oops, what am I gonna do now? Yes, I was like, now I have to use Kahoot, now I can do it. But before, the first times, it was like, gosh, I don't know what to do. And, Every time I said, I have to do a Kahoot, I was not that really motivated, but little by little, because I was 
looking at the results. I was checking my students' uh, reactions. That motivated me. The same happens with the students. So the students also have to tell you somehow what they the way they get motivated. Some of them, they like games, great. Some of them, they, they like using Kahoot, great. Some of them like talking. Motivation is closely connected to goals to pursue an effort. Goals, effort. That has to do with motivation. No. Engagement, not necessarily. Engagement is like, okay, now we're going to play something with, with uh, this kind of, of, of uh, e-tool. Okay, okay, I want to do it, yes. Yeah, we have an objective in mind, but maybe they're, our students, they don't really see it. Now, do we need to know more about motivation? What about extrinsic and intrinsic motivation? No, we know that, no? but instrumental and integrative, how those words, how those different types of motivation can help us to create a better um, environment, teaching learning environment, especially now that we have an online teaching and learning environment. Extrinsic, intrinsic, integrative. No? For example, extrinsic, what number? One, two, three, or four? In ADS here? Extrinsic motivation? What number? Please, in your, in your, in your chat. I think it's number four. Number four. Mm -hmm. Yes, intrinsic? I agree, number four. Number two. Number two, that's it. Instrumental. Number one. That's it. Mm -hmm. And integrative. Obviously, number three. So why is it important to know about the types of motivation that we have? Because then we have to think, oh, in an online teaching learning environment, what sort of motivation am I going to foster in, in my students? I'm saying foster, I'm perhaps develop, but I'm not going to say to teach because motivation is not taught. And so it depends on the student. And what kind of motivation do my students have? Maybe they have the four types, okay, but which type of motivation has I mean the most weight, weights more there. So nowadays, for example, instrumental is the desire to learn a language. Nowadays, it's easier. I mean, 30 years ago, it was more difficult because not many people travel, not many people had the chance to meet native speakers or non-native speakers with a different language than, than ours, like now I can connect with people from India and talk the common language, which is English. So nowadays with the globalization, our students know that it's worth it. Now, integrative, the same. Either you travel or either we get in touch with people like from Japan or from India, from Russia. So it's important to know about this too. This is a mental picture, no? Extrinsic motivation is motivated to perform an activity to earn a reward or avoid punishment. So exams, when we, when we produce and we make, and we get our students to sit an exam, that's extrinsic motivation. So you have to learn because you need to pass this, this exam. Intrinsic is motivated to perform an activity for its own sake and personal rewards. I want to learn. Uh, I want to, to communicate with, with my, my cousins who are Americans, I don't know. Yes. Instrumental, well, usually has to do with 
well, money, job, studies, no? you want to do some research. Nowadays, that this, this is student mobility at university level, yes? So you can take a course in, in, in I'll see, I don't know, let's see in, in, in France, a, a course that you are really interested. And there is a, a, an agreement between a French university and your university. The common language is English, so I need to, I need to, yes? An integrative, if you have the chance to travel or if you have the chance to get in touch with people through the internet, yes? Now, online learning and classroom learning. Online learning, what I got is more opportunities for exposure to the L2. Yes, we have everything at hand, videos, audios, uh, e-tools, online games, everything. In the classroom, there was more teacher presence and regulations. No? More chances to engage with audiovisual materials. Yes, more peer contact and more teacher students exchange. I don't know what happens in your, in your teaching learning environment, but here, as I said, sometimes it's difficult. Like when you go, okay, now you're going to get together in, in groups of three or four in a break of rooms and you, you have to go hopping from one break room to the other. And sometimes you don't have enough time because you have to carry on with your lesson. While when we were in a face-to-face -face class, it was easier to keep that, that contact with the students. It was easier for us to check if they were all participating. So yeah, online somehow helps us to get our students more independent, it's true. But it takes time too, yes? And also has to do with motivation there, yes. Online learning requires a lot of teacher guidance. Yeah, we're always there for our students, no? But teacher guidance is a must in a classroom. I mean, you cannot just leave the classroom and say, okay, now you know what to do. If you are in primary, the kids, they run away from the class, no? So, but, Online, yeah, you're there, okay, I'll be back in five minutes or just you stay there and you get your students to, to do what they have to do. Online learning, the outcomes seem to be immediate, seem to be immediate. But are there really, you really are, are you really sure they, 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 they accomplish those, those outcomes, they, those learning outcomes? Because it's very easy just to click. Click, 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 click. How do you know they're really, really, I mean, your students are really accomplishing the tasks and the objectives that you have set for them. In classroom, yeah, that's more visible. You can see, you can hear them. You can walk around the class while they are talking, while they are working on the project. You can see they are really collaborating. Teacher support to help students overcome a number of affective and technological barriers, yes. yes. Especially the technological barriers, no? But still, it's difficult, it's difficult. How do you know your students are not really feeling well? How do you know your students are not really into, into the lesson? Through the screen? Or do you just carry on with your lesson? What am I telling you this? Because that really somehow is closely related to the part of motivation. How do you know your students are there with you? How do we know? Or you, again, do we just carry on with the lesson? All right, now let's do some, uh, the answer. Now you're working in your, in your break of rooms. Now we come back. How do you know they were really sharing information? Because of the answers they gave me to Julio. Okay, but were they really discussing? Or they just share? Sometimes in a the class they share the, the answers. They have a WhatsApp group and they just share the answer and that's it, they finish it. 
in the classroom is a more, there is a more immediate teacher support. Can we have, have some support online? Yes. How do we do it? That's the point. That's the point. That's the point that we have to think about. So we help with oh, the fostering of our students' motivation. If I do break a room all the time in my class and I never enter a break a room because I don't have time because I have uh, 10 break a rooms and that's impossible for me. What do you think the student who's in, in, in which, in, in the break a rooms he or she is in, you've never been there for him or for her. Okay, you could say, but Julio, he or she can call you. That's true. But some of them, they don't. What do you do in those cases? No? Online learning, students autonomy is enhanced, but it's still guided by the teacher, yes. Classroom, face-to-face, -face, there is less students autonomy, that's true. So the teacher plays a role as a con of a conductor. Why am I telling you this? Because we have to find a balance there. If we find a balance, then we can be a more effective uh, source of motivation for our students. You know? And then we have to think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? No? What am I going to do now? Now that I'm coming back to class, how can I, how can I re-motivate my students? At the beginning, I assume most of our students are going to be eager to go back to school. But then, what's going to happen? What about you? What about you? Are you really motivated to, to start working back the usual way or you're having second thoughts? Yes, like Michelle, for example, they might feel you are not interested in or taking time. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes. So, online learning, motivation is important. Yes. Classroom learning, motivation is important. Yes. So regardless of which mode, teaching learning mode you're you are taking, motivation is important. And we know that. Yeah, you know, we know. But what do we do in order to keep on fostering that motivation? Before we have classroom face-to-face, -face, that's good. So we knew somehow the, 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 the kind of, uh, reaction our students have, the kind of needs our students have. But now online, okay, we may know. Oh yeah, we conduct a, a survey at Google, no? Instantly you have your results. And based on that, you start designing your, some of your activities. So you work towards that motivation that we are working on now. But is that enough? Lucia here is have some TPR activities. Okay, yes. How am I going to do it now? How often have you done TPR activities online learning, in the online mode? How often? Maybe if you're teaching primary, that's good. You have done some of them, no? Secondary, mm. university, it's more difficult, no? Sometimes some teachers, they say, no, Julio, adults, they, they don't like TPR activities. How do you know? No, because my, it all depends on the approach that the teacher takes. Obviously, it also, you have to pay attention to the needs of your students. And sometimes through the screen, it's more difficult to do it. That's why nowadays we have to think about being more Empathic there. Empathy, so important. Did we have it when we were teaching face-to-face? -face? We did. Do we have it now in online learning? Mm. I think, yes, we do. But to what extent? No. To what extent we have that? 
in online learning, teacher is important? Teacher, yes, we are. In classroom learning, is the teacher important? Yes, we are. So I know, but we shouldn't feel threatened by the upcoming of more and more and more online teaching learning uh, situations and modes. The teacher is important. The teacher should be the source for uh, fostering that kind of motivation in our students. But then again, how do we do it? Getting to know our students, yes. Getting to know our students' needs, yes. Getting to know our needs and our motivation, yes. If you are motivated, your students definitely will feel that energy. And somehow they will start getting uh, better and better at developing that kind of fostering in themselves that kind of motivation. So what is motivation then? What is motivation then? Here, COVID-19 times, teaching and learning in online, in an online environment. So I wrote what came to my mind, you know, Google Meets, Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas, turn on your cameras, ghost classrooms, turn on your mic, turn off your mic. Are you there? Am I here? Your signal is unstable. You know that typical, I don't know in Costa Rica, in Mexico, Honduras, but the typical, your connection is unstable. Oh. And I don't know, I, sometimes I'm talking and talking. I say, teacher, we cannot see you. Teacher, we cannot hear you. And that affects motivation, no? So you say your signal is unstable, mine too. Sorry, teacher, but sorry, students, but. So what to do there? What to do there? Yes. Now, if I ask you, do you feel motivated after having, remembering or keeping in mind those ideas, those situations? If you talk to your students, that's great. Look, we may have some problems in, in connectivity. You know that here in, let's see, in, in Peru, we don't have that, that of a good connectivity. Okay, all right. Give them the real situation, tell them what to do in order if the, the, the signal is not, is not good. What happens if, the, if my signal goes off? What am I, what am, I mean, we have to have a backup plan, no? Yes, like I say, Rene says, Duolingo will never take our place. That's it, no? But he says, however, if students are getting more positive reinforcement from apps like this, we have a problem. We get what we put in. Mm. But still, Rene, an app is not going to substitute a teacher. No? And it depends on us, teachers, to avoid that. Technology is here to stay, definitely. Is it good? Yes. But we also have to educate our students on the use of technology. And we have to educate ourselves as teachers on the use of technology. One thing is the use and the other thing is the overuse or the underuse. So we have to find a balance there. That personal touch shouldn't be lost because that personal touch helps the students to keep motivated. Don't let the course book tell you what to do. And that happened with a printed book too. Sometimes we follow the book to the, to the letter and I say, no, this is what we have to do. Like I always give that example. No, in, I, 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 I was teaching in Pura. Pura is in the north of Peru and it's almost in the middle of the desert and it's very hot. 
and the second lesson for a basic course, according to the book that we were using at that time, was winter holidays. And winter holidays in Pura, some students had never seen snow. So it had to change the topic. You see, summer holidays in Pura. Well, I took the language point, obviously, but I, I had to adapt it. But I cannot just follow the text to the, to, the, to the letter. The same goes for the use of technology. We cannot overburden our students with the use of Kahoot, the use of uh, Flipgrid, the use of uh, Duolingo. Let them, let them breathe. Let them breathe. Yes, I know our students are used to doing that because they are engaged. My question is, are they motivated? Yes, we can engage our students with, with using a Duolingo because it's, it's, it's good, but are they motivated? That's the point. Yes. So where do we go now? Online students are more intrinsically motivated. Yes, what does that tell you? that we have to think about how to promote engagement in our e-classrooms. Not only through the simple and mere use of an app. What else do we have to do? Okay, what do we do before the use of an app and after the use of an app? Yeah, okay, I'm going to do Kahoot. Okay, what, what am I going to plan before? using the Kahoot and after using the Kahoot. Because if we just use it, okay, now let's see, let's practice vocabulary. Go to that, this is the link for Kahoot, do it. Click, 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 click. The students were engaged, great. The students were motivated, question mark. That's one point. How to foster motivation teachers, how to foster motivation to learn online and develop talent online too. What do you do in order to develop talent in your students? Online, we're talking about online, teaching, learning online. What do you do? Well, I use videos, but no, 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 that's that, no. I use songs, okay. Maybe use a song and let's sing together, record it play it back and so they can see themselves singing. So what talent do you develop in your students when teaching and learning online? Have you thought about that or just is the clicking? Of course, the clicking, the talent of the clicking is already well-developed. No, even in our in our in ourselves, but what about in our students? Well, Mark, for example, is a collaborative document where they can create something together. Yes. Or do something in front, like draw, draw something. And now I'll give you five minutes, the same as in, in the classroom, the face-to-face -face classroom, and then take a picture and upload it, and then we show it. And then we choose the best one, okay? That, that's, that's one thing. Oh, for writing also, get together, okay? Break our rooms, brainstorm ideas, do something, edit it, whatever you're writing, one paragraph, well, no, a whole letter that would be more difficult, but one paragraph, okay? Now, so, Breaker rooms, change breaker rooms and read and decide which one is the best paragraph. So in that sense, you are, yes, you are engaging your students, but also you're trying to get them to motivate them because they know that whatever they're going to do is going to be read or is going to be heard by someone else in the class, not by the teacher. And that's a way of fostering motivation. Will, will some of them will be demotivated? Obviously. 
because maybe I don't know how to read, but I know how to write or vice versa. Or maybe my pronunciation is not that, that good. Okay, but at least motivate them that they should do it because it's going to help them. Okay. And just by saying that maybe other peers, they, they just mispronounce some of the words similar to what they, 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 they do. Okay. It's not like they're going to feel happy because one pronounces words than, than, than me, for example. I'm not going to be happy if that happens, but at least it's okay. I know that I'm not that bad. For example, that's a way of myself motivating myself, sorry. And sometimes happens to students that. When you're teaching online, how you have to think how to support the desire to stay connected. Uh -huh. Yes, Cecilia says, Julio, uh, students more creativity and collaboration. Yes, no. we have and teachers have to. We have to be more creative nowadays now because despite we can we have everything at hand, huh? videos, songs, e tools, whatever. But what do we do with them? That's that's the point. No. So how to support the desire to stay connected rather than being a ghost student or just stay untuned. Okay, okay, I'm here. I'm here, yeah, all right. No. Julio, what is your, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, no, say teacher. Oh, the famous ghost students. So, nowadays, online, teaching and learning, yes, it brings lots of advantages, but also brings a big, a big point here that is not or hasn't seen, or hasn't hasn't been seen as in some um, size. No, it's motivation in online. Are they really motivated or just engaged? My classes are motivating or engaging. Am I really helping my students to? foster their motivation? Am I really helping my students to like English, to use English? How do we know? Oh, yes, a Google survey. Is that enough? Yes. Now we have to think about how we can provide a motivationally supportive e-classroom climate. Yes. A motivationally supportive e-classroom climate. So to be there for them, as if you were in, in a face-to-face -face class. In a face-to-face -face class, it's easier because you are there. You can see their faces. You can see the way they act. You can see the way they behave. You know who are your strong students and your weak students. But online, how do you know? How do you manage that? Okay, fostering different types of activities. Trying to get your students to be more independent. Yes, but being getting your students to be more independent also implies a big responsibility on your side. Because you have to guide them. You have to, to, be, you have to be there for them. And that also brings that another problem that has to do with all the time answering emails. Now, I don't know if that happens to you when you say you give a sort of um, collaborative task and then everybody's writing you, Julio, and do we have to do this or that? And do that, 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 that. And we have to answer, but it's 10 o'clock already, 10 p.m. o'clock, time to go to bed, but no, we have to, no? But if we do that, they feel well and they feel motivated. Why? Because the teacher is taking part of care of his time to be there for them, even at that time of the, of the evening. Yeah. 
Yes, that's it. So, uh, here, uh, let me read uh, what Dinora says. That it's, it's, it's not easy to motivate the students. That, that's, that's true. No? Even if we have lots of instruments, it's really difficult. No? We should know very well their expectations, their interests, values, and what can motivate one student for the other is not always the same. But the idea is just by, by being there for our students, talking about a teaching online learning environment, they feel that's a way of making them feel motivated. The way you give feedback, no? when you correct your, your written homework, no? not just the same as face-to-face, uh, -face, no? like if you, if you correct only red, 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 wrong, 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 you're not going to get them to feel like, ah, oh, yes, this is a great class, or yes, I'm learning. If you see your written homework, all graded or marked in red, you say, oops. So next time, they, I won't send my homework. To, what for? So what do we do in order to, or, so it's not just a matter of giving them a variety of activities. It's also a matter of being there for them. Yes, it's going to take a part of your time, it does, definitely. It does take part of, of our time, yes. But maybe next time, the following month or the following week, they will feel like more independent. And it's a process. So maybe in two months, you won't, you won't get, I mean, you won't receive like 20 emails at 10 p.m., maybe two or three. Online teaching and learning equal internet and web technological tools, teaching and peers geographically separated, yes. And what does that imply? Hmm? Why do you think sometimes your students are not motivated or they don't want to turn on their cameras? I experience here in Peru because they don't want to show where they live. And in a way, that's a factor that somehow interferes with the process of motivation. So talk to your students individually. Take, we should take some time. And in the end, it's going to be well, well rewarded. Online teaching and learning implies learning autonomy and independence. Yes, yes. The first, the first two or six months, no? most teachers, including myself, the, we were dealing with the classes with uh, like, as if, as if we were in, a, in our face-to-face -face class, no? But no, we have to get them to be more autonomous. But it also, it's also a process for our students too, not only for the teacher, because the students were, I mean, they were used to doing what, the teacher told them to do in front of the class. Okay, how can we foster that autonomy? If you feel if you feel autonomous and independent, you are also motivated to continue learning, because you can do it on your own. You don't need somebody else to tell you what to do. So helping them to become more autonomous and independent also helps with their motivation. They don't need to have the teacher all the time behind them, pushing them in a good sense. So they, they feel, oh, okay, now I can do it. Now I can work in pairs. Now I can work in groups. And we manage to accomplish the task. We manage to, to do what a teacher told us to do without much of, the, of his or her interference. Well, that's great, no? And every time I'm getting better at that, so, it's a process. And it's an inner, also an inner process on in the students. So learning autonomy and independence, no? being responsible for our own learning. We need a teacher, yes, because the teacher is going to guide them the teacher is going to say, you're doing better than the last time. You're doing greater. You're doing much better. No? Oof, you are not doing that well. What happened? 
That's going to be our role, sort of counselor, because our students are going to be more independent. So they don't need us to be there for them every single step of the way. No, they need us to see how much they have learned on their own. No. Online teaching and learning implies collaborative their skills, no? More learning control, but within a better teacher-student effective dialogue. That's why effective dialogue. Why am I telling you this? Because those are skills that maybe, maybe some of us haven't developed yet, but we should, because that's going to be the future of this teaching and learning new way of, of, of learning, of doing it, no, sorry. This teacher-student effective dialogue, helping them to use their resources in a better way because they have to construct their own learning. They have to construct their own learning. No? The same as a teacher. Whatever I'm sharing here no, should make us think and say, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? What is Julio trying to say here? Yeah. But I don't want that. I don't like that. I teach primary, even with primary teacher, the kids. Yes, I don't know how many of you teach primary, but if some of the school, uh, some of the students you're going to have at a school, they have never been to a classroom. They haven't been able to develop their social skills. They haven't been able to develop their, your fine motor skills. And that somehow is related to the brain. Are you really prepared for that? Are we prepared for that? Hmm? As Marta mentioned, working online sessions is pretty hard nowadays. Yes, it is. It is. Young people, young people, how do you think they're going to come to your class? Motivated? Maybe they, they can, they will be happy to be there to see their friends after two years. You know? But then after, I. I Let's see what happens after the two, three week, first weeks. Are they going to be motivated? Adolescents, I mean, from they, they, they stopped going to school when they were 11 or 12. Now they are 13, 14, 15. It's a big change. Chemical changes in their brains. But they haven't been well developed because of COVID-19. So how can we motivate those students? We can be persistent. We have to be persistent. I think teachers of English have this kind of a skill well developed because, you know, we always have group, groups of students who are not that keen on learning English. And not because they, they, are not, they, they, they don't have the intellectual ability. It's because they don't like it. It's because they don't see the point. It's because they are not motivated. So what to do in order to boost that motivation? And here, please think about, or think out of the typical use of video, music, and games box. We have to think about something else. No? Have effective time management skills. Have effective time manage management skills. The same as face-to-face, -face, yes. But even better. Nowadays, the students are used to getting fast information. The information they get it like this. The answers they wanted like this. 
And what about the thinking process? Do you give your students time to think? Do you give your students time to reflect? Do you give your students opportunity to talk to other students and discuss? Not discuss in pairs, no, but discuss like, okay, what's going on here? Why are we going to do this project? Why are we making this movie that the teacher has access to do? Why are we writing a letter? Give them a purpose. And that's a way of fostering motivation. Okay, what purpose is it when I'm writing a letter, for writing a letter? Nowadays, the use of technology, it helps us to Get in touch with what's a sister school. No, my, my school, my, my, my school, I have a school in USA. Contact with the school in USA. Okay, they are learning Spanish. My students are learning English. So we can get together. And that's great for motivating our students. Because they know they have a purpose to learn. They have a purpose to use the language. So teaching and learning online. Definitely is useful, yes. And I'm taking a very good well advantage of this. But not only with native speakers, also give them the experience of talking to, I mean, getting in touch with the schools from, I don't know. Uh, now, for example, I have a project with uh, a, a Polish university, a Polish university. So, and see how this, globalization works. My counterpart is Italian. So he is an English teacher, but he is from Italy. And he teaches academic writing to Polish students. So here I am, a teacher of English who is, who is Peruvian teaching academic writing to Peruvian students. Together, get together. I talk to the Polish students, he talks to my Peruvian students. And then Polish and Peruvian, they talk together, talking about culture. And then they have the, the final project is to write a report on that, those talks and, and everything. And my students are really motivated. So improving one's technical skills, yes. I suppose most of us now have improved those technical skills. I have to be sincere. Sometimes I feel like, why again? Oh, when I was using Moodle, now I'm using Canvas and I say, oh yeah, it's more or less the same, but no. So that's a task, that's an objective that in my case, I have, to, I have still yet to, to accomplish here, no? Interaction. You have to think about the interaction with students, teacher. The students content, the content that we give, the students, the students, and the students, the, an interface. And it's, I don't know if, if that happens in, in, in your countries, but um, I assume that my students were like, oof, sharp users of technology, but not necessarily. Sometimes I had to tell them, obviously after I have asked my IT friends, <laughs> but, I had to tell them. So how do they deal with the interface? How do they deal with, with, the, with the, the LMS that we are using? No, we were using Google, Moodle, Google, Google Meet, sorry, um, Canvas or your own LMS. You know? So how do they do it? And the content, what do we give them? The way you, you uh, construct your exams and the way you send them through your LMS. That has to do with motivation too. So if your presentations have a lot of picture or not, a lot of words or not, that has to do with motivation. So students ability to use the technological tools in order to interact with content and other students, that's a student's interface. Yes. So, as you may have realized, whether face-to-face -face or online, the question is why? Why motivation? 
how can we teach us foster motivation to learn? How, how do you think you can foster? How do you think you foster motivation uh, in your students? That's a question, you, I, I'll, I'll keep it there because you, then you're going to get together and, and discuss. How do you motivate your students? Think of the interaction area. You know? How does this work for you? Do you really have a, like a very fluent interaction with your students? What happens if, if you don't? Have you asked your students the way you interact with them? Do they like it? Now you can ask. Now, for example, for me, that's a good point for, for a, a Google survey. And it says, Interaction helps create online learning communities. Yes, that's something else on, like this, this community of learning. This is our community of learning. Own learning communities help the development of a supportive network among learners. For example, in my classes, all the students, I, I teach at university level, but in all my students, they the, once they have their, their Canvas account and everything, but they have their WhatsApp group. The first day of class, WhatsApp group. So it works great. Everybody asks and answer questions there. A lot of the questions that they used to ask me through the, my regular email or the Canvas email, now they, they do it in, in, in the WhatsApp and no more worries about this. No. Or it also helps when my connection it's unstable, so I can connect with them, talk to them and say, please continue working with exercise number two and I'll try to, to, to sort this out, okay? Or sometimes you say, well, Lynn, for example, has unstable connection. So she says, Julio, my connection is not working well. Okay, so I won't, but if she lets me know, so I won't ask a question. I won't call for her, no? Yes. So. It helps, yes. Online, I mean, technology, it is here to, to stay, as I said before, but we have to know how to deal with that. We shouldn't let technology take over us. That's a problem. That would be a problem, no? So it says, a supportive network can foster motivation to learn, to learn commitment to group goals and encourage the co-construction of knowledge. Of knowledge, sorry. Yes, that's true. Because we're concerned. Because we're not talking to the teacher. I'm talking to my peers. I'm talking to someone who's struggling the way I do. So, I know. I know what it is like to learn a second language. If I'm talking to you, I'm also sharing this. It's like here, now I feel comfortable. Yes, because I have, I think I have some native speakers. I have some non-native speakers, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge to me. Yes, and that motivates me. It doesn't, why? It comes from my inner self. Because I'm going to learn. Because after that, I'm going to reflect on what I've done. At the beginning, Mark was asking, and you're going to, you have some time for break room? I said, I've never had, now that I, I, Mark, if I can share this, um, now I'm thinking, ah, I have never have given myself, uh, I mean, time to think about giving like breakout, breakout room time. Now I'm going to adapt it, I'm going to use it. And that motivates me even more. So we have to find that kind of um, activities or, 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 or situations that we can put our students into so they can really also can really develop that or foster or develop that kind of motivation. Yes. Yes, too many words. So motivation has to do with goals, attitude, Yes. Support. Motivation has to do with success. Yes. Performance. 
and then question and idea and solution. You know? So motivation, support, performance. So what do you what do you do in order to help your students improve their performance in the use of a second language, in this case, English? What do you do in order to get your students to accomplish their goals, their learning goals? Because we can accomplish our teaching goals. Huh? My lesson plan, I get all the activities, my students participated. Oof, that's it. But what about your students? What about my students? Did they really accomplish their learning goals? The ideal lesson would be to accomplish the teaching and learning goals. That would be the ideal. And that's what you, we should pursue there, no? And then this, how successful was the learning because they can learn, but maybe they don't have the sense of success performance support that's so important not only support in terms of teaching or teacher students but also students students that's why they they create that community of learning yes we did it yes great next time we're going to do better all right oof no we didn't do well but next time motivation to learn in online environment then I can ask which one is better, extrinsic or intrinsic motivation? Exam or something else? Carrots and sticks motivation or inner drive motivation? It's a question that you have to ask yourself because if you're teaching, well, we are all teaching in, in an institution where I suppose we use exams, written exams. No? So our teaching just, focuses on passing an exam or you find a balance in that focus. What are we doing there? Also, you have to think about that because it, it also helps our students to develop the kind of motivation that is better for them. That ah, could be, usually it's extrinsic, no? In order to pass an exam, usually. Mm -hmm. But how can we motivate, uh, develop that intrinsic motivation? And intrinsic is, I want to learn because, because I want to, because that's my desire, because that's, that's what I need. Not what the teacher needs, not what the, the exam uh, requires. No, it's because of me. And sometimes you, you may have students or we may have students who are not that good at taking exams and they get like, they get a very low grade, but they are very highly motivated. And we also have students, which is the other way around. They have, they have very high grades, but their motivation is very low. So let's find a balance here. Extrinsic, well, we mentioned it. It's easier to handle and achieve exams, oral exam, written work. Yeah. Closely related to engagement, yes. Yes, I want to have exams. So you have to study, you have to participate. Okay. And everybody loves it. Everybody. You know? Why? Because it's easier, faster, and more... Um, tangible, yeah. linked to short-term motivation. That's one point. Yeah. So when we're dealing with online teaching, extrinsic motivation is used through the implementation of a reward system. Clicking, that's extrinsic motivation. So if most of your activities related are related to click, 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 you are extrinsic, you are dealing with extrinsic motivation. Because you, it's a reward system. Yes, no, right, correct. An immediate report, no? Oof, the job of the teacher is, 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 is not that, that heavy. 
But what about the learning on the part of the student? Extrinsic motivation? Yes. Students are more willing to invest their time and focus on what they are interested in a topic, no? The way they do. So yes, using e-tools is great. Great for extrinsic motivation, definitely, yes. But once they get used to that, that motivation, fingers on there, no? So that desire to engage in an activity due to external factor rewards, punishment, like good grades, talking about sort of pressure, that has to do with extrinsic motivation. But then again, what happens when the pressure goes? What happens when the use of the Kahoot or a Duolingo is like, ah, again, mm. video again. Oh, the typical, the typical beginning of Mondays and Wednesday song. Students are nowadays are much, much cleverer than I used to in my times. And they get tired of or whatever they're doing very quickly. And that, you see that through the use of the social media. You know? So what happens in that, in that case? What am I going to do? What are you going to do? So remember, once our students get accustomed to the taking novelty, their motivation wears off. Oh, teacher, again, Kahoot. Uh, yeah, please, teacher, change, no? So what do we do in that case? What do we do? Pedro mentions if, uh, strategies to raise to raise up students' motivation. A good, I mean, one of, one of the strategies that has worked with me is when I get them out of the, of the school, talking about online, as I said before, with the, the idea of connecting them with students from other classrooms or with the students from another country. That's, to me, has worked well. Another one is working collaboratively, collaboratively no? So uh, I put them, uh, like a, I said, uh, a project that takes different stages. No? First, they have to do some research on the topic. Then they have to decide what to do. They're going to do a video or they're going to do like a podcast. No? Then they start working on the video on the podcast. And then they have to present it. And the best, the best video podcast, I now what I do is I send it to the, um, the office that deal with, with the communication in, of the university and they publish that podcast or they publish that video on the university channel. Yes, so usually it takes two, two months, three months, the whole, almost the whole cycle at university but they are motivated. I mean, they are really into that project all the time. No? And I don't have to, to interfere much. They get in touch with me. They obviously we have our usual English classes, regular classes, but they are also working in a parallel uh, way with their project. And that's part of the assessment. That's also another way of motivating your students. Okay, this semester, we're not going to have like final exam or, or midterm exam. We're only going to have the three stages of the project. So you have to send me what you're doing and who is doing it because they work in, in groups of four. So that's to me is a strategy to foster and to promote motivation in my students. Usually the idea of, of um, for the students, not the idea of knowing that their work is going to be published, that the work is going to be read or seen by, by people who are not in the classroom, is a good source of, of motivation. And they like it, you know? they like it. Obviously there, were, there are some students who are not really into that, but then I ask them, okay, uh, 
Pedro, no, what would you like to do next time? And based on that experience, I start designing other activities. That's what I, what I do. Um, another strategy is to, to get them at the beginning of the class and say, okay, what would you like to do? That's a typical, we know that, no? We know that and we say, okay, because that helps us to see the needs of our students, but not in terms of learning, that I want to learn this or this grammar point or do more writing or no. What sort of project would you like to do? Some of them ask for, for drama. I mean, preparing a, a, a play, you know? I haven't done it yet, but that could do, that could do, yes. And also when, when they're working in that way, they kind of uh, stay away from using the same e-tools all the time. Of course, they have to do some research. They, they go into Google, they enter there, they check and, and so on. But they have to decide what piece of information they, have, they can use. They have to decide who is going to do what. They have to decide when they think they have accomplished each stage of the project. Learning autonomy, learner independence. Are you there as a teacher? Yes, I am, but I'm just guiding them. Yes. Okay, so intrinsically motivated individuals perform better, yes. Are more resilient and experience less burned out. We know that teachers, we have experienced that burned out last year and probably the, day, the year before, yes, but intrinsically motivated learners show greater satisfaction and believe me, they do. But we have to find the right, the right um, variety of activities, not only a or an activity. You have to think of different activities, short, long, I don't know, but depends on, in this case, depends on, on, on how well you know your students. And for that, you have to give yourself some time to get to talk to them, even if they are little kids, even if they are little kids. No? So think about that. No? So characteristics of independence, self-direction and intrinsic motivation have long been associated with online learners. Yes, online learning has to do with independence, with self-direction and with intrinsic motivation. So why then our students are demotivated? Sometimes, well, because it's a process. Sometimes they are up, sometimes they are down, but we have to find a ground, middle ground there, yes. Online learning relies a lot on intrinsic motivation. Why? Because the learning environment typically relies on intrinsic motivation and is associated to curiosity and self-regulation to engage learners. Self-regulation. Okay, it depends on me as a learner, not on what my teacher wants me to do, because I can do it, but okay, I did it. I finished teacher. I finished clicking. I finished writing the answers. But what else? What am I going to do with this? If the teacher doesn't pay attention to those, those issues, then, the students, the students are going to continue with, okay, I finish, finish teacher, finish, finish, finish. But the question is, the question for the teacher is, are they really learning? Are they really motivated to learn? So how can we foster motivation? Autonomy. But I said, going far beyond Google. No, so no, don't just, Look, uh, yeah, okay, do this and they start. No, okay, they can, they can use Google, yeah, but then they have to decide what to do with the information they have in their hands. That's the point. That's fostering autonomy. It's not just copy and paste, compare, no? Work on a project, compare the Incas with the Aztecas. 
Yeah. If you have a Peruvian friend, okay, if you have a Peruvian or a Mexican teacher, a Peruvian teacher, inter interview the teacher. So my class interviews the Mexican teacher and the Mexican teacher class interviews me. There you are, you give them a purpose, give them a purpose, that's another strategy, you know? And then arouse curiosity in your students. How do you do it? Clicking, let's go beyond the clicking, let's go beyond the course book. How can you arouse curiosity? Find out what the Aztecas and Incas had in common. Okay, that's a question that, oh, what do they have in common? So they start working on that. Yes. So you can stimulate your students' curiosity, creating a teaching learning content where they can ask valuable questions and develop critical thinking. We always talk about critical thinking, but what is critical thinking? A teacher has to know that. A teacher has to keep in mind that. You know? Challenge. We have to challenge our students to think, to discuss, to question their partners, as well as you. They, have, they can question you, the teacher. And sometimes the teacher is not going to know the answer. And the teacher has to be honest enough to say, I'm sorry, I don't know, I'm going to look it up and tomorrow or the, the next, class, I'm, uh, next class, I'm going to bring the answer. Does that, make, does, does that make me a bad teacher? No, on the contrary, it made me an honest teacher. No. So I will avoid, not the typical answer, no, I say, but teacher, why not this? Oh no, that's American English. No, that's British English. No, that's, that's a typical answer that sometimes we say, no, no, that's American English. No, this is, no, he says, I don't know. That's it, let me, give me time to check. And sometimes you can find it in, in give me some minutes. So I check and then you give the answer. And you explain the answer because the students can find the answer too. They, yeah, do they know how to explain it? No. Work out ways to deal with frustration with technical problems. Our famous unstable connection. I found it, I found like having the, this um, WhatsApp uh, groups, very helpful to deal with this unstable connection. Yes. Is working on increasing motivation easy? Hmm. Not that easy, not that difficult. It's possible. It's possible. It takes time at the beginning. Yes, it does. Because we have to think of different activities. We have to think about our students. We have to really get to know our students. You know? So motivation on, in online learning settings gets you to concentrate on the design of the environment to elicit student motivation. If we're just going to work on what we have in the ebook, think about that. So what's motivation? Should activate you should get you going, it should maintain, keeps you going. Get you going, keep you going, and indicate you to where you are going. And it takes time, it's a process. It takes time. Okay, class, I think this is it, Mark. Uh, you have any questions? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you see, I was forgetting that uh, now, I'll put you in, in the breakout rooms so you can discuss and do some reflection on what we've done and maybe we can share ideas, All right? So let's see. Uh, put... so I, I can help you with that if you, if you don't mind, okay. Julio. Um, right. So guys, I think in um, because of time, since we're already at 4.30 here, Costa Rica time, we're gonna keep this at about six, seven minutes maximum. Um, take advantage of this time to just reflect on how some of these ideas might come up in your own uh, teaching and, and the thoughts that you've had about these over these last couple of years. So we'll put you in breakout rooms, make sure you kind of turn your cameras on and your, your microphones on so you can interact with your peers there. And, and then we'll come back for some final comments.
All right. So um, give me just two seconds to get those breakout rooms ready to go. OK, let's do it. OK, Julio, looks like everybody's back from the breakout room. Sorry we had to keep that one short. We're a little bit oh, over time right now, but at least everyone had a chance to say hi and, and talk a little bit about what you've said so far. So I'm not yeah. sure if you have a few more remarks that you wanted to make as a conclusion or if you wanted to go ahead and take a couple of comments. Uh, or questions oh, from first I take a couple of comments here. Um, please, um, somebody would like to share what you've been discussing in your groups. Somebody, I was I was talking to to Sergio Sergio Sanchez in my group, and he was he was telling me that. He learned because he wanted to, no, not because his mother sent him or, or the teacher. And I, I told him that was a, a very clear example of intrinsic motivation. You know? And he also learned, knows how to deal with French. And then we were talking about interesting things about the use of uh, an e-tool called to produce cartoons. No? That was what said. Thank you, Sergio. Lin, please. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only thing, you know, we really talked about in, in motivation is, you know, from minute to minute, hour to hour, when the students come in our classes, their emotions and their feelings at that moment um, really affects their motivation. And what is it that we can do? Um, I always say I'm always enthusiastic about every activity we're going to do. And I show my, my enthusiasm. But then I also constantly ask students, Every class, how are we feeling today? We feel like reading something and working with vocabulary. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, they don't want to read. I mean, if the majority don't want to read, I have a number of activities, different kinds of activities. And if, it, if it, they feel like doing that, that's what we'll do. It gives them the motivation to do it because they don't have any well, uh, reaction. <laughs> Yeah. So I have a number of different activities. We're going to get to the end goal in sight for what we're going to cover in that class, but at least we're going to be doing something everybody feels motivated to do. Well, at least the majority of those are motivated to do. And I always like to joke around with idioms or something particular we're learning. And I said, how would that how would that work in Spanish? Or what if I said this? I say something in French. I go, doesn't that sound funny? Well, that's how you would say it in French. How, how would you say it in Spanish? And we make jokes about how funny the language is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To get them laughing about a specific thing you're learning. And, and we laugh about it and joke about it, about how funny it sounds or how funny the construction is, is weird. Sometimes that gets them really interested in, in learning it. And then it, it's not really learning English, it's learning about language and communication in general and how we screw up and how it's funny or we didn't say it the way we meant it or whatever. And at least we keep it lighthearted and funny. And sometimes it gets them a little more motivated and yeah. sometimes they'll engage with it. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Yeah. What I do, Lynn, is something similar to you, but what I do is like just as a sort of uh, brain teaser, you know, I say, okay, this is like a red car, no, but in Spanish, how do you write it? But they write it the way we speak, we say it in Spanish, but in English, no, car right. red, no, so, and then with more complex sentences, and they also start learning, I mean, doing some, some sort of comparative uh, language, no, comparing the two languages yeah. without, without telling them what to do, what they are learning, just for fun. Yeah, it. or like practicing with idioms. I said, how, uh, what does cats, rating cats and dogs mean? And how would you say that in Spanish? How do you, how would you express that in French? Let's see how it sounds. Does it sound funny? Sounds funny to me. And then everyone's amused. And for some reason, they start engaging. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes, somebody else before I play? Nope. Okay, so just to finish with this, remember, try to use language that emphasizes student ownership of a challenge, the challenge, no? Like it's not only to say, I want you to, but it's your challenge is. 
just by using that those sort of phrases, it helps to promote internal motivation. You know? I know that you can do this. That's another one. Yes, I'm going to give you a piece of writing as homework, but and, and I know you 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 are going to do it. I know you 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 have the the ability to do it. So that's to promote internal motivation. No? Also create meaningful student to student interactions, meaningful. No? They are necessary for motivation. That's why I told you about this project that I have with students from even, I mean, even from, from Pura to Lima. No, we have a campus in Pura, we have a campus in Lima. So get together with students. Yeah, they are Peruvian students, but they're going to use English and they're going to interact with each other. No, and that helps motivation with motivation. No, no. Uh, well, plan a synchronous meeting per week for learning partner breakouts. No, and also having an agenda and reflection questions, not only related to the class, but something different. No, and it says give at least one opportunity for live practice and answering questions, not your students. That also gives them a lot of, of, of ideas for to look forward to. Add to your students and, and also they give them the, the, a purpose. That's, that's why let's give them a purpose you know, to use the language. And that is a good way of motivating your students. Okay. So those are these are bibliographies here. And if you want to share your ideas or some other topics that you may have in mind, that's my email. And thank you very much for your participation for being here and thank you mark too thank you of course absolutely we want to say actually thank you to you for <laughs> your time today uh, we had a great and very motivating session and so um everyone if you've got your camera open give julio a big thumbs up or a wave or if you don't have your camera open post a little something in the chat <laughs> thank so, you Thank That's you, the, my dear friend. The friends. quietest cheer you've ever heard. Right? <laughs> you, could, you could see it though, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. <laughs> thanks so much, Julio. And Thank thanks you. everybody for, for being here.